I stole $1,500 from a girl with Asperger's, but she deserved it. Am I the a-hole? Every summer, my community has a cook-off competition. Where's the lamb sauce? Usually about 20 to 30 individuals or couples try to cook XYZ, and then they can win a portion of the entry ticket fees while the rest go into community parks. It's not summer yet, but they decided to do it a little early. This year, it was pasta sauce. Ooh, delicious. Italian pasta. Italiano. Italiano. Barbara Boopy. I've been going to these for years, ever since my wife, my wife, and my I wife. moved here, but this is the first time I entered as a competitor. This pasta sauce competition is gonna get insane. I'm a marinara monster. One of the other competitors, I know her somewhat only in passing, is a 15 or 16 year old with Asperger's syndrome and autism. I don't know much about this condition, evidently. I'll call her Jessica. I guess a lot of people got wind of her being a part of the competition that we had news crews here taping her to put her on the news. Also, there must not be like a ton going on if like someone with autism <laughs> Autism entering a pasta competition is newsworthy. Local pasta sauce kitchen takes the city by storm. <laughs> Jennifer, how's that marinara hanging, girl? It's made with the blood. <laughs> <laughs> marinara monster! We've never had this before, as far as I know. To make the story short, I won the competition. And $1,500. <laughs> Ooh, big buckaroonies. There's no second or third place prize. It's winner takes all. My wife and I were in shock because I like to think of myself as a decent home cook and take pride in my pasta sauce specifically. But to win a contest, I was tickled pink. We celebrated for about 20 minutes when the event organizers came to us. There was another girl in the competition that had a mental disability. You might be able to guess where this was going, but they asked us if we'd give our prize to Jessica as a gesture of goodwill. They said they get some good publicity since news reporters are here. We obviously said no. Fifteen hundred dollars is a lot of money. So they asked us if they. So they asked us if. So they asked us if we'd like to split it 50-50 with Jessica. And likewise, we said no. I guess some nearby patrons overheard the conversation and chimed in. Apparently, we're assholes and jerks for not sharing the prize, at least. After a few moments, there might have been 10 other people clamoring to us and how we're a disgrace to the community. Okay. If you wanted to give it to the autistic person, just say the most autistic person wins the $1,500. We had to leave and haven't collected our winnings yet. We're meant to go tomorrow from the mayor's office, but I can't even imagine what's going to happen tomorrow. Are we the assholes for not splitting our winnings with a disabled child for a kicking competition? Oh, man. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, let us know what you think in the comments. Like, would you give your winnings to the autistic girl? Would you not? Please put your answers in the comments. I'm kind of like unsure. But John, what do you think? So my initial thought, right, is like, they wanted to give it to her. Why not just make her win? I, you can't like announce it and be like, oh, just kidding. We're just going to like take yeah, we're it gonna away. Take it away. Yeah. It's like, the, why did you make me the winner in the first yeah. place? So like, is he the a-hole for not splitting it? It's one of those things you you, you just won't look good. You won't like, look good. Even if you're not at fault. Yeah, it, you, it, it, it sounds like you're taking money from the autistic girl. It's not the best look. I almost <laughs> feel like I would do it just out of like, I don't want to be the a-hole. Like even like, okay, what I if don't you're know. late on rent though? Late on rent, <laughs> I might have to be a big old a-hole. <laughs> Uh, so I don't know. How, how about you? Um, what would you do? <laughs> <laughs> Steve goes. I'm more okay with, with giving it away. Yeah. But it's kind of like shitty on the organizers part. They're not, the real a-holes. Yeah. Like if this is your plan, don't announce OP is the winner. Just yeah. say like, like, why not just announce the autistic girl is the winner? Literally. Then it's like the whole thing is great. And it's like, oh, yeah. like I think OP you're not in the wrong for taking it, but what yeah. is more important, your reputation or the money? And is your reputation worth $1,500? Maybe it is, dude. <laughs> I don't know. But what would you do? Put your answers in the comments. My girlfriend freaked out when I was looking at pictures of other local women. I was in medical school and it was a textbook assignment, but you won't believe what she did next. So some backstory. My fiance, Annie, and I have known each other since we were children and began dating junior year of high school. After high school, we both went to our state schools and I asked her to marry me our junior year of undergrad. I have always dreamt of being a doctor, as has she. When the application process began, we applied to a good mix of MD, doctor of medicine, and DO, 
doctor of osteopathic medicine, schools of varying degrees of selectivity, though all med schools are insanely selective. Now, I had initially planned on continuing my education at my state institution because I did not want to take on too much debt. Very smart. I did end up getting into my state's med school, but I also unexpectedly was offered a spot at one of the best medical schools in the country. Harvard Med. It's one of the top three in New England. It's Harvard. It's for sure oh, Harvard. Oh, yeah. So you Man, thought you could hide Harvard. it. You thought you could hide it. Oh, yeah. We know. We know. Master detectives. I would have been inclined to reject the offer. From Harvard? Are you freaking crazy, dummy? <laughs> had I not also qualified for a partial but still significant scholarship, it would still cost me more out of pocket than my state school would, but not significantly so. Oh, okay. That's not Maybe a couple of thousands of dollars more. Annie, despite pleas for myself, our parents, professors, advisors, et cetera, et cetera, applied to only our state school and to some insanely selective top 10 schools that she, to be blunt, had no chance of getting into given her mediocre grades and research experience. Damn. Oh, oh come on, gee. bro. Obviously, this crushed her, and I've tried my best to support her during a difficult time and to help her remain optimistic. Oh man, that's that sucks a that's lot. That's rough. That sucks a lot, especially seeing that like he got into like the top one yeah. in the country. <laughs> that sucks so that bad. That sucks so hard. Our situation is now this. I'm currently enrolled at the aforementioned New England Medical School, <coughs> Harvard. While Annie has decided to take a year off to strengthen her profile with research experience, physician shadowing, etc. And she's currently living with me. There were no jobs open related to her undergrad major, political science, here or in our home state that would be able to give her sufficient time off for research. Not the most employable degree. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, to, to be clear, I don't think you need a degree at all. <laughs> yeah, I studied yeah, yeah. mechanical engineering and I did not and work. look what you do now. Yeah, I look, I'm a bum on the street now. <laughs> So now she's currently working part time in the retail industry. I've tried my best to be completely supportive of her as I know it's a difficult time for her. And I have never, ever said I told you so or anything along those lines. Please continue Yikes. not saying that. <laughs> Please. <laughs> this is what ended up happening Friday night. I was at home studying for a test on Monday when Annie came home from work. She asked me over to the desk and kissed me. I asked her how her day went and she didn't respond. And she suddenly looked very pissed off. After a few moments, she said, what the f is wrong with you, OP? While pointing at an anatomical diagram of a vagina in my textbook. Bro, this lady does not deserve to be in medical school. <laughs> I what are, are you looking at pictures of other naked women? Um, yeah, I mean it's it's part of the the exam. Like I need to know the female body. No. You must go in blind. <laughs> Feel it in your soul. <laughs> I was speechless. After regaining my composure, I managed to let out a surprise. What do you mean? I'm studying. To which she said something along the lines of, you know what the f I mean? Why the f are you looking at pictures of women's vaginas? No one's wanking to those medical vaginas. Unless that's like the only wank material you have. This was very strange because she knows I occasionally <laughs> masturbate to hentai. So. <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> I occasionally watch corn and she has no problem with it. In fact, I know that she enjoys corn from time to time as well. I explained to her that I have to take anatomy in medical school and she wasn't having it. Bro, I think she shouldn't be a doctor. I don't think she understands what doctors look at. She's like, all right, um, and now can you disrobe and put your your uh, smock on? Oh, my God, oh my I can't God. believe you would get naked in front of me. <laughs> what is you? this, a strip club? She took my textbook and stormed off to our bedroom and locked the door. I could hear her crying, and I kept apologizing. After a few minutes, she opened the door and threw her engagement ring at me before slamming it shut again to continue crying. Wow. Okay. Whoa. All right. Yo, 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 Whoa. yo, yo, yo. I'm fucking suspicious. This is blowing out of proportion. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, I know. No, 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 there's no, something no. under the surface. There's that something here. There's a Claymore mine yeah. waiting to burst. I smell something fishy Ooh. and I like it. <laughs> I continued apologizing, but she did not respond at all. I spent the rest of the night on the couch. Saturday morning, she wasn't home. I checked my phone and there was a text from her saying that she was staying with a friend and that she was done with us. Unless. Unless. I dropped out of medical school and found another job because, and this is 
honest to God text from her. She doesn't want me oogling at vaginas like an effing pervert. Wow, this girl is insecure as fuck. There we go, baby. This was completely out of character for her. She has always been level-headed and reasonable and has no history of mental illness or anything like that. I'm not a stupid person. We get it. You went to Harvard <laughs> Medical oh, School. Oh, my God. So I'm not that. a stupid person. Yeah, we get it. We I get it. We cut, get it. I could cut the grape. Uh. <laughs> I went to a school in New England. <laughs> oh. I know that this has way more to do with a picture of an effing vagina in an anatomy textbook, but I have no idea what to do right now. She stopped responding to texts and won't pick up her phone. I spoke to the friend she's staying with who basically called me an effing a-hole and said that Annie is crying and getting drunk and that neither of them want me coming over to speak with her. What? Her parents passed away when we were young children and she doesn't have any siblings or much family. I have no idea what to do anymore. I love her more than anything, but there is absolutely no way I'm dropping out of medical school for her. Yes, do not do that. Yeah. And I would rather we break up than I bend to her completely unreasonable demands. But I'm very concerned for her mental health right now and just need any advice I can get. Okay, there is an update. Um, okay, I'm, but, I'm excited for that juice of an update. Everyone right now, let's take a quick breather. Super quick. What are we thinking? Is... All right. So I think no. the real question is, do you uh, stay with her through this yes. period of insanity yeah, yeah. or yep. do you break up with her? Yeah. She's obviously incredibly insecure. Her life is not working out in the way that she envisioned. Yeah. She's taking it out on OP that much. Like we know for sure. I think it is OK for your partner to have moments of being crazy. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like, especially if you've been together for a couple of years, there's going to be moments where like, their actions just don't make sense because sometimes people go berserk. It happens that way. Right? It happens. Yeah, it just it just happens, yeah. right? But but to what length are like like if they're constantly saying drop out, you know, it, uh it may make sense at this point to like uh, take a break. Like if this doesn't get resolved within a week or two, because this is a pretty big delusion to have to say drop out of medical yeah. school. I say give it a week or two. I mean, you're engaged, so you probably want to save it if you can yeah so give it a week or two if she's still saying drop out of medical school then say hey i think we should go on a break and then but reach out to me if you ever want to talk and then see if she ever wants to talk i like that yeah i like that that's good advice um but Thanks. are you ready to dive into the madness i hope it goes smoothly dive into the madness but i know it won't <gasps> okay update i'll save you all the trouble she wasn't cheating nor was she pregnant okay so she's just insecure well, we shall see. Okay. It's the update, Samuel. Right. <laughs> uh, yesterday, I decided that enough was enough, and I headed over to see where she was staying intent on ending the relationship. When I got there, she was half drunk, and what followed was a lot of screaming and cussing directed at me. I learned why she wanted me to drop out. It had nothing to do with textbook vaginas. When I was a sophomore, two of my friends dropped out of college to work on their tech startup full time and invited me to come work with them. My undergrad degree was in computer science. I rejected the offer because I wanted to concentrate on my dream, becoming a doctor. Fortunately, their startup did very well. And last year, they sold to a large tech company for a very large sum of money in the low eight figures. Congrats Damn. to them. Damn. Nice work. Yo, eight figures is like minimum 10 million. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good exit. I was thrilled for them after they sold the company. Both of them obviously had large lifestyle changes. One of them proposed to his girlfriend with a ridiculously effing big diamond. And they frequently vacationed in exotic locations with their family and their significant others. Apparently, their success and lifestyle made my girlfriend extremely jealous. And she came up with a vagina thing as a way for me to drop out of medical school because she thinks that I can easily get a job making 150k a year at a bank so we don't have to live like effing refugees. And and that I'm an effing idiot for not doing so. I still think she's salty for not getting into medical school because this was her yeah. dream yeah. until very recently. If it's like, if that's the obvious choice, why are you continuing with like, yeah, academics? exactly. Still, I was confused. I asked her about our dreams of being doctors. Turns out she never really wanted to go into medicine, but only claimed to because it was all I ever talked about. Oh, break up with her. I guess that explains her application strategy. Break up with her. I was done. I broke up with her on the spot and told her not to contact me again. She's going to continue staying with a friend while we find out a living arrangement. No, smart, 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 wow. smart. Okay, so 
here we are. This is the final countdown. Um, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> did hope you made the right decision. A hundred percent. Are you sure? This bitch crazy. No, like she's super insecure and also like sounds like she is a people pleaser to the point of being like pathological liar. Yeah. Like to lie about your dream of going to medical school for that long. That's kind of crazy. Bad, bad, bad. Um, and also you should like, especially early on when you don't have any reason for like, I understand if you have like a kid that you're trying to raise together and you're like, yeah. Hey, like you might need to be more realistic with your dreams. Right. Um, but when you're single, like you should, you should both be encouraging each other's dreams like that. That's like why you have good partners at a bare minimum. If this was some, and it's, it's obviously insane, so it doesn't matter. But if this was truly something that she thought would be good for him, she should be like, Hey, I just like had Have this idea that, and I yeah. wanted to share this with you and wanted to see like, but yeah, she crazy. She crazy. She, she crazy. crazy. Uh, <laughs> good decision. OP to break up with her. I'm sure you'll find a bunch of really good looking Harvard models, hot Harvard, uh, hot Harvard, models. Harvard models in my area. Yeah. My sister gave up her kid for adoption and didn't tell anybody. I'm trying to find her kid now and it's worse than I thought. So. My sister had a second child and we were all thrilled for her. Congrats. Congrats. She lives a few states over and we haven't seen her since last year. She had one child two years ago with her boyfriend and the other one was born last month. Yesterday, we had a family Zoom meeting to see the baby and say hi to my other nibbling. Nibbling's a cute, cute name. That is very like that. adorable. We got on and the family starts to load in. Everyone is basically there thrilled to see the baby. We get to meet her new baby boy. And after a bit, I asked to see my niece as well. She got quiet and very quietly said that she didn't have her. My aunt questioned this, and I was also confused. After a few minutes, my sister said that in the beginning of January, she put her daughter up for closed adoption because she couldn't care for two kids. Wait, wait, the older daughter? The older daughter. Somehow that is worse. It is. That sucks. Imagine being given away by your, your parent. After a few minutes, everyone lost it. The whole Zoom was a mess. We didn't know. We never got to say goodbye. She didn't have to do this because any one of us would have taken my niece. I could have taken her. I've had multiple miscarriages and fertility issues. And although I'm currently pregnant and stable. Wait, so the whole family could have. The entire, like basically. Why would you do that as a first, like, like a first action? So I have the resources to have taken in a toddler as well as my own baby. Important. My sister has always said that she wanted to be a boy mom. Yo, she just one child policied herself. Oh my God. She just CCP'd. Like, <laughs> my goodness. I will only take care of man because man can till the field. She CCP'd, but she's about to get CPS'd. Oh, child protective services. Let's go. I lost it. I called my sister a narcissistic punt i asked her when she'd get bored of their new baby and get rid of that one too valid question i asked her how the hell she could do this without reaching out to the family i know my sister and i know deep down she just doesn't want a daughter she was depressed when she found out that she was having a girl but got thrilled for this entire recent pregnancy with the boy i called her a monster for treating the children that she didn't want to care for like they were a novelty I said some other things too. At this point, my grandma is a complete mess and says her chest hurts, so I stop. My aunt, who is with my grandmother, goes to help her and turns off the camera. Oh no. My grandmother ended up having a panic attack that they thought was a heart attack at first. Holy shit. I am so glad that she is okay. My sister has since cut off all contact from the entire family. My father is pissed at me for blowing up. I was what? the only one who did. But are you, dude, the OP rightfully blew up. He said that he could have tried to convince her to reverse it, but with my verbal lashing, it completely ruined any chance of getting my niece back. I don't think he understands what a closed adoption means. Also, adoption takes a minute. So for her to have completed it by January makes me feel that the entire process was in place for a minute. I don't think there's any chance of seeing my niece again when the father and mother both signed her to be adopted. Oh my God. He's mad at me because he lost his granddaughter and is now afraid he'll never know his new grandson. My dad thinks I'm an a-hole for freaking out and nearly giving my grandmother a heart attack. Wait, wait, wait. OP is being blamed for this? You I gotta think be joking. We're me. directing the uh, anger in the wrong direction, my guy. 
I'm feeling guilty that my grandmother had such an extreme reaction, but I feel that's more because she lost her great granddaughter. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely the reason. Edit. I've also contacted local child protective services in my sister's area, local courts, and I have a lawyer looking into this for me starting tomorrow as I just obtained them. Thank you for all the helpful comments pointing out all the issues with this, especially thank you to those in social work who reached out to me privately. I didn't realize how many options I had to fight this or to see if it was legit. I'll update you when I find out more from the lawyer. Lots of people think this is fake. I really wish it was. This has been a nightmare. Thank you again to the people with helpful suggestions and feedback. All right, so we got a, uh, a decent bit of updates here. Okay. But I have to check in with you all. Did OP overreact? Like, technically speaking, one could say that this reaction, you know, if she had held it in, maybe the sister would yeah. be still in the picture. But honestly, it seems like there's a ton of other options. So yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I say the reaction is completely valid. Yeah. Especially given the reasoning. Like, oh, I just want I just want a boy. Like, that's pretty f- the up. dumbest thing ever to yeah. abandon. A child yeah. that you've been raising. Especially your older child. That just seems f***ed. Yeah, yeah. Something about it just does feel worse. Yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? Because, like, that feels worse to me, but may- maybe we're we're not seeing something here. So, yeah, let us know in the comments, but let's go to the update. All right, we got we got some, we got a, a, a got good a little juice. meaty update here. First update, I'm pursuing legal custody. And due to this, I will not be providing more updates. My lawyer recommended this. The kid comes first. I can say a few things. One, they found her. Oh. The adoption process started a year ago in silence as a private rehoming. Year ago. Wow. It was explained to me that we could fight it as they skipped steps in the process. My sister told them that she had no family and that the family she does have is abusive. So she just lied. She just lied. There was abuse on our mother's side, but they are long gone now. Three, there's an open investigation into my sister already because of the way she surrendered custody of her daughter. Number four, I'm going to temporarily move into an apartment in that area so I'm close by in case CPS takes custody of my nephew. It was explained that this is the only way that I could actively fight for custody by being available and close. Wow, OP is is really <clears throat> making a lot of sacrifices here. It's a lot of sac- sacrifices. Like, on, shout out to OP. Honestly. Yeah, shout out. OP is a, a saint. Yeah. I'm unsure how to react to this new information. I'm six months pregnant with my first after multiple losses. My mother-in-law informed my husband that she won't be getting anything for us for a baby shower because she's setting up her own nursery. She's using my old crib, which my husband originally thought we would get. I'm fine with not getting this old crib. I would actually rather buy a new one. We may be getting custody of my sister's children as well. It says children, plural. Whoa. And my mother-in-law made it clear that they wouldn't be welcome, but she had room for my future child. She sent pictures for her nursery, and it's almost complete while we didn't start ours. Honestly, it's gorgeous. We just bought a house, and we were saving for the possibility of taking in my sister's children. We aren't going all out on a nursery. We're being frugal and mindful of it. Meanwhile, she clearly spent thousands of dollars already. It's just odd that she's building a full-blown nursery. I'm a bit confused on why she's doing this. She doesn't talk to me much, so she doesn't know that I plan on exclusively breastfeeding for a bit and doing attachment bonding. Frankly, I don't think my child would be spending the night till after six months. I'm unsure of how to react to this. Oh, so basically, okay. like it's like, hey, I'll help out with you raising the kid. I'll have this this nursery, that so if you ever need help, I can take care of it. But I'm not going to take care of your sister's kids. Interesting. That's weird. This is yeah. a whole, there's a whole bunch of weird family there's dynamics here. There's a lot here. going on here, honestly. <laughs> So, okay, I guess the big question is, we've heard everything. What would you all do in this scenario as OP? You have like the new kids, which seems like you might be able to get both of them and the mother-in-law that's now like seems trying to kind of encroach. Well, on I think them. it's more like she's off. It seems like she's offering to help. Yeah. Raise the baby that is like biologically re- related to her. Yeah. But she's like, no, I don't want to take care of those other kids with all the drama. Like, yeah. those are that's your deal. Um, but I'll help take care of the other kid. Like, oh, your- almost in like a like if you spend all this money on a nursery, are you trying to like almost like kidnap them in a way? Like, like I give yeah. me the baby so I can raise it. That that's like almost what it feels like. It yeah. feels a little. There's like it feels weird. There's a weird yes. subtext going on here. 
I wonder, like, are you guys like a little creeped out by this? I feel like I'm a little, yeah. I'm a little wary about this. Uh, I would love to know what you guys think, but I think OP is doing the best she can with what yes. she's got. Yes, yes, the hand that was dealt. She's doing her best, and Loki is saint for for adopting those kids from what seems to be like a pretty up home like literally she you know moved to try and get them she's like saving on a big yeah. home to accommodate everything and you know she was this whole time planning on just having one child now she's gonna have three, three. children yeah you know and like like a newborn a uh a toddler and yeah. you know a, a baby that's a few months old it's a lot it's a lot I've struggled with infertility, so my brother pranked my husband saying that I'm pregnant. Should I kick him out of the wedding? That is a terrible prank. I, female 34, have been with my fiance, Jack, male 36, for over seven years. We've had infertility issues for years, and the topic of children has always been sore spot for us after trying for years without succeeding. Jack has always wanted kids, and we decided to adopt as our last option but after we got married. Everything was going smoothly, our wedding invitations had been sent out, and my brother, Sam, 22 male. M me? I swear I didn't do it, Clearly. I swear. My brother Sam likes to joke a lot. They call him Sammy the Jokester. That's a lame name. I don't find him funny because his jokes tend to be cruel, and I do not have the best relationship with him due to that. He's already joked about my infertility issues in the past, but my family would excuse his behavior. Because it was hilarious. Because <laughs> well, he made it so damn funny. He was just so good. Days ago, I was visiting my parents' house while Jack was out working. I left my purse on the coffee table and went inside the kitchen to help my mom. Sam was in the living room watching TV. We had dinner and talked a bit, and then I opened my purse to check my phone. I had turned it off, so I started it back up again and found that there was 15 missed calls from my fiance, Jack. I freaked out thinking that he had gotten to an accident or something. I called his number immediately and put him on speaker. He asked me about the text I sent him an hour earlier, and I asked, uh, what text? He said there was a text telling him that I was pregnant. Sam suddenly started laughing. That's an evil prank. Though. God. Sam. Cancel all Sam. No, don't get across us. the board. He asked if it was true and why I didn't tell him in the morning. I was shocked and said I didn't send anything. He told me to check my messages and I did. And I saw that at 7.30 p.m. someone sent Jack a message saying that I was pregnant. I was confused as heck. Sam kept laughing and admitted to sending it right away. I lost it on him, and he said that it was just a joke to mess with Jack, and that's all. I'd say just a harmless little, harmless little joke. That, like, to think, to, to tell someone something that they think, like the thing that they've been wanting for ages, and then to rip it away, not a good prank. I asked how he could think of this as a joke, knowing him, how hard it was for Jack, even if he believed it for one second. Yeah. Sammy argued back that he didn't think Jack would take it seriously, but it was sent from my phone. So it was supposedly sent by me. I said his behavior has gotten out of control. And after the stunt, I no longer want him at my wedding. And he was uninvited because I only want supportive people at the wedding and he was being Far from that. I think Sammy deserves that. My parents said that I should calm down before reacting like this over a silly little joke. And that Sam was just telling this nasty little prank. No big deal. But I refused to keep arguing. I grabbed my stuff to go deal with the trauma Sam caused Jack with his joke. Ugh. Jack was so upset, but unusually quiet. He cried in the middle of the night right after I apologized to him for what happened. My parents kept calling me, asking me to calm down and to reinvite Sam, but I refused. They offered that they apologize to Jack, but Sam refused to apologize, insisting it was a teasing joke and nothing more. <laughs> nothing more. My goodness. Uh, okay, gang. Please, please tell us. Do you think Sam is the a-hole? But more importantly, what would you do in that you imagine you're OP right now? You've made the decision to remove Sam from the wedding. What do you do? What do you do? Yeah. Yeah. You're out. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> I'm done for. Sam is over. Um, okay. So I, mm, mm, I just feel bad for the the husband. Yeah. Like, like I would almost kick it out because of the emotional 
damage the husband has received. Yeah. He just like Sammy's got to get his shit together. And he obviously doesn't. And that was, that's a really mean prank. Terrible. Yeah. And he won't like, he just, and also what is he going to do at the wedding? Ooh, you know, that's a great Mr. Prankster point. Sammy. I don't want him ruining my wedding. Get the f- out of here. And just like, like the un- unfunniest thing, at least make it funny. At least no. be good. <laughs> it's not even a good bit, bro. <gasps> it's not at all. You take that to the laugh factor. You're getting booed. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I think Sammy deserves some justice. Yep. And he needs to be taught a lesson. And so Sammy, no invite to the wedding. But what would you do to Sammy? Put your favorite yeah. torture methods in the comments below. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> My baby daddy is a scumbag. He's married and I'm pregnant. Now, this guy thinks he gets to make decisions about my child. Last summer, I, 33 female, started sleeping with this guy, 45 male. In December, I found out I was pregnant. Ouch. And while I'm pro-choice, I decided to keep it. I was already feeling like we were at the beginning of the end of the relationship. So I said, hey, look, I'm pregnant. I've made this decision, but it's up to you if you want to be involved, and it's okay if you want to bail. I have the resources to do it alone. It can be free. Dude. He said a baby wasn't something he wanted, and I said, hey, that's totally fine. I won't even put your name on the birth certificate. We can treat this like a sperm donor situation, because that's all that you are is a space of sperm. Bye, daddy. He agreed. After that, he predictably started pulling away and we broke up. Three months post breakup, when I was six and a half months pregnant, this woman DMs me and says, hey, uh, were you sleeping with my husband recently? <laughs> oh, have you seen that new uh, Marvel movie? Like, it's pretty good. And also, by the way, were you sucking my husband's dick? <laughs> it turns out that he had a wife and a 13 year old daughter. Like, find out if, like, they're actually divorced first. Yeah, yeah. Do, do your research. Do your research. His wife was slash is in the process of getting a divorce from him and is gathering evidence of what turns out to be a wild amount of infidelity. Oh. So she was relatively cordial and believed me when I said I had no clue. Dang. Wow. I'm just imagining the questions this, like, wife is asking. It's like, so have you slept with my husband recently? What positions? <laughs> For how long? What was the birthmark on the tip of his penis? <laughs> It's not a birthmark. (laughs) It's genital herpes. (laughs) Even before we'd broken up, I told him that if it was a girl, I wanted to name her Samantha. Samantha isn't the actual name, but it's similar, long, girly name with multiple nicknames. It was my sister's name before she passed away. And even before that, it was the name I loved for aesthetic reasons. We always talked about naming our daughters after one another before she passed. It's so sweet. Pretty cute. yeah. Yeah. He expressed dislike, but I jokingly, but not really said it wasn't really his decision. Yeah. You said he didn't want to be a part of it. <laughs> Come so, on, bro. Get out. My man clicked unsubscribe yeah. to fatherhood. <laughs> <laughs> also, hit subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> to us. Yeah. After everything came out in the open, I found out that the reason he was against the name was because his 13-year-old daughter is named Samantha. Oh, who cares? Now that everything is out in the open, he said, so what are you going to name her? And I said, what do you mean? I already told you, Samantha. (laughs) And he said, you can't do that. That's my other daughter's name. I said, he lost naming privileges a long time ago. And if anyone asked, I was happy to make it clear that I'd be the one to pick the name. I also reminded him that I still wasn't obligating him to be involved in any way. And given how he lied, I frankly don't want him to be. Honestly, OP, great decision. Yep. But if and when he chose to be involved, I was going to hold him to it and expect child support, visitation, etc. Which from his POV is not ideal because he doesn't want the responsibility of care and especially doesn't want the responsibility of child support and asset splitting. So he just wants to name the kid and have a little control, but uh, with none of the responsibility. Can I have all the benefits and none of the work, babe? Rather, he wants to have his cake and eat it too. I take on all the responsibility. There's no paternity test, a blank father's name on the birth certificate, but he still gets to have opinions, which frankly suits me as well because I don't want to be legally tied to him. But when I told my friend, she said that while he didn't deserve custody, it was an unkind thing to do to his 13-year-old. So am I the a-hole? I want to know what all of you think. Put it in the comments right now. Tip tap on those keyboards. But uh, John, is this an a hole move? She gave him all the opportunities in the world. She had the big, the big screen, the big button that says, "If you like the benefits that come with this package, you can click subscribe." He declined. He declined. He declined. So he lost 
any and all privileges. And plus, he's not even it's it's not even like, oh, this kid is going to be like living with him and there'll be like two Samanthas, which even still isn't that big of a deal. And it's like you want to control the name like it, it has act- no actual true like consequence. Yeah. And it's also like I like I actually don't get the comment at the end of, oh, like what about the Samantha that's 13? Like when is this kid and Samantha ever going to interact? Because like it sounds like the father is not going to be involved in the kid's life. So it doesn't matter that they're both named Samantha. But Sam, only once you have, you know, there can no be no other Johns in the world. There can yeah. be no other Sam. It's true. Ever. It's Especially true. that you that are like somehow close to you in your like orbit of life. Like, no, 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 no. Cancel. I actually literally unsubscribe from friendships with other Sam's. Wow. I will be the only one. Smart. Yeah. Smart. Well, uh, I hope you're not the only one that's commenting, um, but if you are, go tippy tap in those comments. Tell us what you think. Also, we love you and we'll see you soon. You watching right here.